What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now, five in particular, in the month of October, heading into the month of November in 2019. So if you guys enjoy this video at any moment in time, feel free to go to down below and hit that like button and consider subscribing if you do want to see further content about the stock market investing and trading and don't forget to join our strive smart discord group chat and our strive smart facebook group those are linked down below and are 100 percent free of charge so guys let's get into it without further ado starting off here with the spx the s p 500 index the 500 largest publicly traded u.s companies and guys this actually took a turn for the worse here in the last hour of trading we were thriving above 3,000 points today i think we hit a high at about 3,015 or something like that and you guys can see we clearly sold off below 3,000 and then Ended up closing at around 29.95, which put us in the red for the day at 10 points and 73 cents in the red, down about 0.36. So we talked about in yesterday's video how we were breaking out of this ascending triangle wedge pattern, right? We were breaking out of it, which was really good. And in, that, in my eyes, that was telling me that, you know, the S&P is going to these all-time highs, 3,026. Today, again, we got to about 3,015, almost halfway there. But we saw a very, very strong resistance at 3,015 throughout the day. So that's kind of something to keep an eye on, right? Right over these next couple of days as we try and get to those all-time highs you know we have to break above 3015 now but the good thing is like we talked about in yesterday's video we ended up breaking above 3,008. That was the level that we were struggling to break out of on the 17th of October. We closed below that yesterday, so the fact that we popped above it today, that pushed us to a higher high. So the continuation of the uptrend was there, and this pull down is honestly not too bad. We're holding this, uh, this 50 SMA here on the hourly chart. We're also holding an old resistance at about 29.95 as a new support so I kind of want to give the SPX here some wiggle room tomorrow and see you know are we going to hold this as a support if we start to pop back up and especially if we break back into 3,000 territory into that you know general area you know that's going to be telling me the S&P confirmed a higher low and now we're pushing back up to test 3014 and maybe even get to that all-time high that we've been talking about at around 3027 so keep an eye at this level level here on the SPX very very important and if we go to the SPY you guys can see we broke a critical level of support today at around 299.30 ish right you know we broke that level but nonetheless if we go to the 20 day one hour similar to the SPX here we actually pushed to a higher high today we got almost to 301 dollars per share and if we go to the one day one minute we can see that and we can also see how strong of a resistance 309 uh 300.9 was today as well but despite the fact that we fell you know, towards this last hour, hour and a half of the market, almost two hours, if we go back to that one hour chart, we are holding this 180 SMA right now at a higher low. So I just want to give it some wiggle room. Again, just like the SPX, the SPY, it's really just an ETF that tracks the SPX. And a lot of people look at this to kind of get a broad idea of the US market. So just keep an eye on these major levels here. If we pop, you know, hold this at a higher low, that's going to be bullish in my eyes. If we break that, break that support, obviously that's going to be bearish. We may be going down at 297 on the SPY here, back to the SPX. If we look, you know, if we break 29.95, some levels we may be going to, 29.50 is one that comes in mind here. And uh, other than that, <clears throat> maybe 28.80, that's if we break 29.50, obviously, right? So going to the Dow Jones Industrial Average today, guys, down about 40 points at the close, 
down 0.15%. And this is a bit different than the SPX because yesterday we failed to break out of the ascending triangle here. We actually got rejected by it and now we're looking to pull down and potentially test 26,600. And the fact that we closed above that, that's a pretty good sign, right? But this is still looking bearish to me. So I do think it's possible, especially if Boeing reports bad earnings tomorrow and that stock dumps. I think it's possible the Dow does end up running down here and testing this tomorrow and maybe even breaking it. Um, you know, if a lot of these Dow stocks in the future, in these next couple of weeks, as earnings are rolling through, do poorly. So that's kind of what I'm watching for on the Dow right now. If we go to the 20 day, one hour, we can see the clear resistance at 27.1 got rejected by there. We're trending under the 50 SMA. At this point, if we break the 50 SMA, watch for the test at 27K here on the hourly chart. If we break that, that's bullish, right? If we end up dumping below 26.6 like we saw on the four-hour chart, that's going to be bearish, and we could potentially see more downside from there. And going back to that hourly, or really the one-day, one-minute, you can see the Dow went from almost 20. 27k with about an hour and a half left in the market today and it dumped all the way down and to be honest guys I don't really know what the catalyst to this is I saw some headlines before recording this video about Brexit but I didn't look too deep into that so let me know down below if you guys know what dumped this market because again I'm recording this 10 minutes after the market closed so I'm still trying to get my thoughts together for the day but obviously I've, I plan the video have things for the video but other than that, you know, I'm just confused as to what made this market fall. So let me know down below in the comments about that. Going to the NQ here, you know, this one ended up closing down 91 points today. Tech was down pretty heavy. This is down 91 points and it's falling obviously because this is the future down about 1.15 percent. And if we pull back here to the four hour chart, this was looking bullish, right? This was looking bullish because we broke the ascending triangle. Now we're starting to see some strong resistance at around 79.90 to about 8,000 bucks, right? If we zoom in a bit, this is looking like a double top here. We're falling down and we're honestly breaking below 78.70 right now, which is another main support. So this is starting to look a bit bearish in my eyes in terms of the NQ, especially because of this double top downwards break that we're seeing. And by the way, if you guys don't know, a double top typically is a bearish move, especially if we're breaking support levels, you know, after the double top like we are right now on the NASDAQ, right? If we go to the hourly chart, you can see we're breaking the 180 SMA here, which is pretty bearish as well. On the five day, five minute, you guys can see the big dump off and the break of that 7870 support on a bit of a closer scale, which again, like I preach on the channel, guys, it's why it's so important to look at multiple time frames, not just one, but look at everything because it tells different stories, these different time frames. You know, the five day, five minute might be telling a, a completely different story than the four hour chart, right? So overall, that's what I'm looking at in terms of the markets right now. We were doing pretty well. Markets dumped. Again, I don't know what the catalyst is. It might be Brexit. Let me know down below if you guys, um, you know, really have an idea. Is there not a catalyst? Maybe this is just profit taking. Who knows, right guys? But anyway, let's get into what I personally did today. Then we'll talk about these five stocks. And very simple, I traded Abvi overnight and I actually ended up selling out of my position today to really reanalyze and look for a better entry point tomorrow. And let me explain why. And I'm sure you guys probably know if you watched my video yesterday. So let's zoom in here to the 20 day one hour chart actually let's go to the five day five minute chart so i could show you guys where i got in so i got in yesterday morning i believe it was around 76.7 76.7 roughly right there i swing traded for the entire day and i held it overnight and my goal with this originally like i stated in yesterday's video was to sell some shares here and then maybe sell the rest of my position at 81.35 but since it filled the gap 
so quickly this morning to the resistance, I decided to completely sell out of the position, take the quick little gain here on the overnight swing trade, and now I'm in a position where, again, I want to maybe enter this one, re-enter this one in the next couple of days, or maybe even wait until after they report earnings here on the 1st of November. It's kind of a mixed bag for me right now, I'll be honest. I'm thinking about what I want to do, and um, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm telling you guys in this video, because really, I took the profits now. I'm like on the fence, right? I don't know if I want to re-enter before earnings, wait until earnings, but then if I wait until after earnings, I might miss an opportunity, right? But these are just things going through my mind. Another thing is the RSI is overbought, so I didn't want to get caught in an overbought stock that sells off over these next couple of days. So, you know, I ended up just taking those profits, and if we zoom in a bit here, I took the profits as we started to see a strong resistance under that overall level on the four-hour chart. And you guys can see it. There is almost a triple top here. I guess you can say it was a triple top. You know, we got rejected here at 78.60. Then we tested it again a couple of minutes later, really about 45 minutes after the market opened, got rejected there, got rejected again about 45 minutes later, then again about 45 minutes later. And at this point, guys, I think I it might have been this pop or this pop. Nonetheless, I sold out, guys. I sold out of the position. I believe it was might have been this one at around 78.44. I saw a little descending pattern starting to form here, um, you know, lower highs, um, and I, I just thought, I just decided to sell out at that point. And if we look at a percentage gain, you know, it's justifiable because I was up almost 2.5% overnight. That's a pretty good overnight move, in my opinion, for, for the way I'm trading and my risk tolerance. So I decided to take the profits there. Another... A trade I entered today was in Procter and Gamble. They reported earnings today. They did very well. They sold off. There was a lot of profit taking in the morning. It went from 125 to about 121 bucks. And this is perfect scenario for me, guys, because like I always talk about on the channel, I don't really like buying stocks before earnings. I like getting in after after I see a positive report and a lot of just just good sentiment from the company surrounding the earnings report. And that's what we got today from Procter & Gamble. If we look at the live news here, zoom down a bit, I'll show you guys their earnings. They reported sales of $17.8 billion. That was what they reported, and the uh, estimated, or not, not estimated, Last year was 16.69 billion, which is a it's a pretty good year over year increase, right? But that's not the earnings. Let me show you guys the earnings. Where are they here? Um, here we go. One dollar and thirty seven EPS beats one dollar and twenty four estimate. That's a very very good beat. That's very very good. Sales came in at 17.8, like we just said, right? Year over year increase is pretty good there, especially for a mature company like Procter and Gamble. And that's 17.8 billion beat the 17.42 billion which that's a good beat as well so the stock guys I woke up this morning I posted a screenshot on my Instagram this stock was up very very big this morning right you can see here from yesterday's close at around 118 this one was up to 125 which was about a five percent move you know you know really overnight at that point so from there we sold off all the way to 121.7 and once we hit this bottom here guys we started to pop up. I bought some Procter and Gamble literally right here, not at the complete bottom, but I bought some here at around 121. Point nine, one hundred and twenty-one dollars and ninety cents, and this is one, guys, that I feel comfortable swing trading. A lot of analysts are raising their price targets on Procter and Gamble. Again, their overall trend on the one-year, one-day chart is up. We got the massive gap up above the fifty SMA on that one-year, one-day chart, which I think is very bullish. So. Maybe it wiggles a little bit for these next couple of days, right? It hovers around 120, 122. But overall, in the next month, I think this swing trade, the swing trade I'm looking to build, I think it's going to be very, very good. Um, I think it's going to offer a lot of potential over the next month, you know, as it consolidates, as it, you know, pushes up, pushes down a bit and picks that overall direction, which in this case I think is up, obviously, which is why I'm swing trading it. So Procter & Gamble, I'm in that. Abvi ended up selling out, looking to get back in, but that's overall what I ended up doing today in these markets. So let's go rapid fire and talk about these five stocks that I'm looking to trade, and I'll throw some bonus ones in because 
because honestly, I have more than five stocks listed here, and a lot of these stocks are reporting earnings. So let's get into this quickly. The first one is Visa, guys, ticker symbol V. This is reporting earnings, I believe, tomorrow. On the 24th, that's actually in two days from now, this is worth watching. Again, whenever a company reports earnings, you want to look at the guidance, you want to look at EPS year over year, you want to look at revenue year over year, did they beat analysts, just a bunch of different things because this is what moves the stock the next day, right? Either up or down. And based on these earnings, that's what we're going to do as traders. Based on what the earnings are, we're either going to do you know, shorting, we might short the stock, put options, call options, or we might just straight up buy shares and swing trade it over the next couple of weeks. So Visa right now, although the technicals, I'll be honest, they're not looking great. This is moving horizontally. If we draw out this um, little pattern here, you guys can see we're moving horizontally right now in Visa stock. We're at a support at around 170. So just keep an eye on this, right? This one does have some good potential if we start to push up above 170, especially if we hold 170, you know, coupled with a good earnings report. This one could do pretty, pretty well. Just keep an eye on it, right? PayPal is another one that actually fell through the floor today. If we actually look at these technicals very quickly, you can see I drew out a level at about 100 bucks and have been talking about this level as a very strong level of support. If we were to break that, as you can see, I drew out the trend line a couple of days ago. I was saying if we break that level at 90, 99, 100 bucks, we may be going down to $93. And unfortunately, we're trending in the middle of that channel now. This is looking like a falling knife. So there's a pretty good chance that we do get down there, especially if they disappoint on their earnings, which are tomorrow, the 23rd of October. So this is another stock. The technicals aren't looking too great but typically around earnings it's pretty volatile as are a lot of these tech stocks right a lot of these growing companies you know surrounding earnings so keep an eye on it right worst comes to worst you know we sell off to 93 we obviously will be very oversold at that point and then maybe we make a comeback up to 99 100 bucks to retest that as a resistance and from there we may break out which would be very good we may be going back to the 100s 105s at that point and especially if we, especially if we break this 180 SMA resistance. So PayPal, worth watching there. Amazon is arguably the biggest earnings report uh, this week, right? This is tomorrow, not tomorrow, the 24th, 10 slash 24, 19. And this is another one that's been beaten down over the past couple of months, right? From the high at 2035 down to where we are right now, that's about a 13% opening. We can see here, we are holding 1700 bucks pretty nicely. We held that level back in June. June, in the beginning of June, before that rally up to 2K. Now we're holding it again at 1700, but we are getting rejected at 1800, putting us in this 100 point zone. So, what are we going to do here in Amazon stock? Are we going to break 1800 bucks? If we do, I think we could fill up to 1850 after the earnings report. If the earnings report is positive, that could definitely be a good thing. If they beat aggressively on EPS revenue, year-over-year year numbers are looking good. This could really run up to all-time highs here, in my opinion, if these markets in general, do get to these all-time highs. If we get some positive optimism around China, we get some good earnings from a lot of other massive companies, this could push the market in general. But with the market struggling at 3000 right now, mixed bag earnings so far, we had McDonald's didn't do that well today. You know, I'm interested to see if we do get to those all-time highs. Again, I think we will in the short term here, but that's just something to uh, think about, right? Earnings in general, mixed bag, um, you know, this can definitely bring the market down or maybe it pops it up. It's really just a toss-up at this point, right? So Amazon, watching that one, let me pull up my phone again because it shut off there. Tesla is another one that I'm watching. Obviously, this is one that's reporting earnings, I believe, tomorrow. Yep, Tesla's reporting earnings tomorrow. Keep an eye. It's holding the 50 SMA on this four hour chart. That's looking good. I think if we break 260, we could fill the gap up here to 275 bucks. So watch that. I believe if we get a good earnings report, which with Tesla, it's another mixed bag company. 
you know, every quarter I feel like it's different for them. So it's going to be pretty crazy whether we pop up 10%, sell off 10%, anything can happen. But just keep an eye on those earnings. Again, keep an eye on 260 to 275. That could be a tradable play there. If we break 250 here, we may be selling off to 240, 245-ish. That's what I'm thinking on Tesla. So McDonald's today, guys, they dumped. And this is one that I'm seriously thinking about a swing trade here once we start to settle, consolidate, and find some support at any of these three levels. The first level you guys see is 200 bucks, roughly 197 to 200 bucks. We closed above that today, which is good. The next level is around 193. And the, the level under that is around 188 bucks. And you may be asking yourself, why did McDonald's tank today? Well, if I pull up this little picture here, you can see their earnings. $2.11 versus $2.21 expected. Revenues, $5.4 billion versus $5.5 billion expected. One good thing about their earnings were the global same store sales, or same store sales, that's a little tongue twister there, guys. 5.9% versus 5 5.6% expected. So they beat on that. But nonetheless, the major metrics, you know, EPS revenue, they didn't beat on that, pushing us down here. And honestly, I'm not mad about this because McDonald's has been a stock, I feel like, that's been due for one of these major pullbacks. If we look on the three year, one week chart, this pullback is due. We were very overbought. We're selling off now. We're holding that 50 SMA. Well, not really holding it yet. We're trending above it. So I'd be watching this you know, large chart on the three year, one week time frame to see if we hold this. If we do, this is going to be a sign for me to enter, um, you know, especially as this earnings disappointment fizzles off, because I think it will, you know, McDonald's, it's a premium premium company, one of the best companies in the world. Ultimately, I think this is just going to continue running up here, especially if these markets are healthy. Well, you know, one one may argue that the markets aren't healthy right now, but if the markets stay the way they are, decent, you know, trade talks don't get crazy. We don't get crazy pessimism surrounding certain, certain things. These markets run up over these next couple of months. I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if McDonald's was running up with those markets, and I think they will, which is why I'm looking to swing trade it. So two more guys. Procter & Gamble is actually one on the list. We already talked about that. So one more, which is going to be Boeing. Boeing, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is going to have a lot of weight on the Dow. You know, if Boeing, if Boeing, you know, dumps tomorrow, they report earnings, um, you know, on the 23rd, if they do poorly, this can weigh the whole Dow down and put Dow back in bearish territory, you know, the, the, the Dow back in bearish territory, you know, if we go back to this four hour chart on Boeing, some major support levels. We talked about, I believe, in yesterday's video, or maybe not yesterday's video, but one of the previous videos, 330, very, very strong level of support here. If we break that, you know, we're going to have to pull up the three-year chart to see where we'd be going next. You know, arguably, you can say 300 bucks flat, we may be going to that, which could be a put option play if we do get that trigger down, the, you know, the, the selling pressure. We do get, obviously, negative earnings coupled with that, which would probably cause that selling pressure. You know, this this could be a very shortable stock, in my opinion, especially since a lot of people have been saying, you know, Boeing might not be, you know, doing too well here in the short term due to the issues they've been having with their planes. So overall, guys, those are some stocks that I'm watching, five in particular, some bonus ones. Actually, let me give you one more bonus one right now. Altria, guys, MO, this stock has been tearing it up from the low at about 39 bucks, and I've actually been buying this stock in my my, you know, uh, what's it called, guys? My portfolio that's private, the private portfolio and the public portfolio, which is the M1 series that I have here. I've been buying it heavily and I'm up a good amount on the shares on the M1 portfolio. I believe I'm up like 12% on the position already. The other one, I forget how much I'm up on that one. But either way, I think this is worth watching. They're also reporting earnings here, although they are overbought. Watch to see what it does here at 46 bucks, guys. If we break 46, consolidate there a bit, this one could be starting to reverse back up to the 50s. And it's long overdue because tobacco, although it's been 
declining obviously the cigarette sales which is Altria's main business you know that's been declining there's no doubt about it but I think there's a lot of future potential with their investment in the marijuana industry with Kronos and Juul I'm gonna say guys I think Juul has a lot of potential although it's been heavily scrutinized in this country being the United States and globally honestly guys it's been scrutinized but I think over the next couple of months next couple of years I think Juul is going to have a lot a lot a lot of potential here, which is why I've been buying Altria and uh, why you should be watching it as well, because this is a company that it's mature. It's a mature company. Some may argue it's declining. Its core business is declining. That's a fact, right? But they're looking to plan for the future. This is a company that's looking to really grow future revenue streams in in industries that are going to boom. And I do believe the marijuana industry is going to boom here in the next 10 years as more states legalize it. And I think the electric company, not electric company, uh, the electric cigarette company, Juul is going to do very, very well as well here. So overall, guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me about the stock market, investing and trading. And don't forget to join the Strive Smart Discord group chat and the Strive Smart Facebook group. Those are linked down below, as well as my personal Instagram, my Twitter. Everything is linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.